this this is better all right uh, I am satisfied that the constable has returned the warrant uh, so what I'd like to do at this point is um, have a uh, is there any objection uh, to allowing uh, town council uh, Nicole right up here uh, to speak as well as uh, perhaps uh, town uh, accountant is there any objection to allowing them to speak oh and uh, administrative assistant is there any objection to allow town administrator my oh, my deepest apologies town administrator is there any objection to allowing these three people to speak they are not uh, citizens of the town and so therefore they need permission in order to speak any objection hearing none you're allowed to speak um, if there's anybody who is not a citizen of Brookfield, Massachusetts, you should be sitting over there. Uh, I'm assuming that everybody is a citizen of Brookfield uh, that's sitting in the middle here. Um, registered voter. Thank you, Town Clerk. All right, so I just want to read some rules um, for this evening. Um, I do this all the time, and I just want to make sure that um, everybody understands. Most people here uh, understand how this works, but I want to make sure that everybody does. Uh, a speaker making the initial motion on an article will be given five minutes to explain uh, or support, explain support for the article. Further comments supporting or opposing will be limited to no more than two minutes. Time limits are overall. So if you ask somebody a question, uh, the answer comes out of your time, not theirs. Uh, no one will be recognized a second time on any motion until everyone, until everyone else wishing to speak has had an opportunity to speak. I will also do my best to alternate between those that are supporting an, a, a motion and those that are uh, opposing. Uh, a motion, and I'd like to just carry it on that way. So, if you're in line at that microphone, uh, and I ask for supporting, and you're not supporting, uh, you leave way to the next person in line who's who supports it. Okay, everybody understand that? Any questions on that? Good. Uh, rude or disrespectful speech will not be tolerated, and we do have constables. Constable up here. Uh, he, he's. Uh, what did you say? Eighty. What? Constable Grubbs is also here, uh, but Constable Lapierre, uh, you said, I, I hate to, I hate to, do you mind if I say how old you are? 83 years old. He challenged me to fight him, and I said, not on your life, okay? So rude and disrespectful behavior, the constables will take care of that, so please, just be nice. Uh, all debater questions are directed at me. Uh, not to the audience, you're talking to me. Um, let's see, the previous question, uh, once uh, the previous question, and if you don't know what that means, it's a motion to close debate. Once that motion is made, uh, we will proceed to vote on that motion, and if it is successful, debate will then be closed. If we have a line of people standing there and that motion is made, I'm sorry, you're out of luck. 
microphones, again, alternating, supporting, and opposing. Uh, we are here to make decisions about uh, the town of Brookfield. Decisions are made by making motions, debating, and voting. We only have two articles, so this is pretty simple, I think. I'm overemphasizing this. But no one uh, should speak unless they are engaged in one of these two things. You should look to address the town meeting either in support or opposition to a motion. You can certainly ask questions during debate, but please keep questions and debate focused on the motion at hand. If anyone uh, has stolen your thunder and made the point that you wanted to make, please refrain from repeating the same point. Um, if you think I'm doing something wrong, uh, please stand up. I don't care if you're interrupting me or anybody else. Please stand up and let me know that you think I'm doing something wrong, and then we'll go from there. Uh, finally, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, we don't have to worry about that. Okay. So, everybody, any questions on anything I just read? Mr. Mer Moderator, Don Taft. Yeah. You're going to uh, provide five minutes for the petitioner to make a presentation, correct? Five minutes. Okay. Would you also allow the five minutes for the planning board chairman to yeah, respond? Yeah, I, I think that would be an Thank appropriate you. thing. And I may change these rules to take care of that as well. Um, so what I'd like to do, like I said, there's uh, two articles on the warrant this evening. One uh, is going to probably take us uh, a, a little while. Uh, and the other one is probably going to be taken care of in a very short period of time, and that's article number two. Uh, and so um, I'm just wondering if by unanimous consent uh, we can take up, by unanimous consent I mean does anybody object to doing this? If you do then we'll go through a process, but it's just a lot cleaner and quicker to do it this way. Uh, does anybody object uh, to taking up article number two before we take up article number one? Hearing none, uh, I will take a motion on article number two. Moderator. Uh, I'll give you the microphone. Mr. Moderator, I move to appropriate the sum of $30,000 from free cash to tax title expenses. Is there a second? All right, is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. Oh, I'm sorry. I You're going to walk a little quicker. I absolutely do have a question here. $30,000, when are we going to stop paying KP money to check our real estate tax titles? When is um, this going to stop? Uh, be careful. Be careful of what? We don't use KP for tax title. That's the first point. The second point is that we've generated over $150,000 in tax title takings, and in order to continue that and not raise this on the tax rate, we would like to transfer the free cash so it doesn't raise the taxes. What's the $30,000 going to be used for right now? It's paying for cleaning up titles in land court. On how many properties? Do we have a number? One moment, please. Thank you, Kelly. You're welcome. Roughly 30. When are we going to start uh, disposing of these properties? We're working on trying to find an auctioneer who will take the properties to auction. Do you have any that are all set to go? We do. Okay, so you're trying to move those now? Yes, we are. Okay, and this 30000 is coming out of free cash? Yes, it is. All right, what's that leave us with free cash? $610,000 in free cash. Okay. All right, thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. We just uh, appropriated uh, $30,000 for tax title expenses. Uh, all right. Now, um, we're going to article number one, uh, which is to uh, a citizen's petition. So uh, is there someone here uh, that wishes to make a uh, motion with regard to the citizen's petition? Uh, is there anyone here that's is going to make a motion on article number one? Uh, would you please come to the microphone? You just walk right up here. This way. Hey, Steve Lamro. 
Yeah. Um, just making a motion? Or? I, I don't know what I was really supposed to do. Make a motion that we hear the article number yeah, uh, yeah, one. No, I'm sorry. If, if you'd like to come up and make the motion, I'd be more than happy to hear I you thought, come yeah, up I and make I the motion. I had to make a motion to hear it. I, I, I mean, I didn't know I had to come up to. Somebody has to make a motion, otherwise we're going home. So somebody better make a motion here. I, I mean, can I can I move to hear the? My name is Christopher Keller of 36 Lake Road. I hereby make a motion that we hear the article number one on the warrant. So well, hold on a second. So, all right. So you're moving to amend the town bylaws according to what was printed in the warrant. Is that correct? I make a motion that we hear the, the, the article number one as is on the warrant. I'll take that as a motion to amend the town bylaws according to what was printed. I'm giving it to you I'm with sorry, a silver I'm, platter, for heaven's sake. Order, I'm taking that as a motion uh, to take up uh, the citizen's petition. Okay. Are you, are you a vote, registered voter of town? Okay. I, David Fromm, moved to vote to approve the zoning bylaw as printed in the handout replacing the text of warrant article. Is there a second? All right, there's a second. A motion has been made uh, to approve uh, the uh, amendment to the town zoning bylaws as it, as, it as it was printed in the warrant, as it was printed in the handout. Okay, all right, so the first question I wanna ask everybody is, there was a handout in the back of the room. Okay, does everybody get one of those handouts? It says, uh, amended warrant article Proposed amendments of the Brookfield Cannabis Zoning Bylaw. Everybody get a copy of that? Because if you don't have a copy of that, you should go get one because that's what we're actually going to be talking about tonight, not what was in, uh, you know, what you might have seen that grayish sort of um, sheet that came out earlier. Is everybody clear on that? Just want to make sure everybody has the correct piece of paper because that's what we're going off of. There's some milling about, so I'm going to allow people an opportunity to. Mr. Moderator, yes, John Tapp. Uh, so the attachment says pages one through four. However, there's only three. Could somebody clarify that? And our report is based on the mark, not just page four. Uh, about, about, about. The fourth page was, can anybody hear me? The fourth page was the beginning of the signed petition by the registered voters who signed it. All right. Motion has been made and seconded to amend the uh, to amend the zoning bylaws to propose them or amend the uh, Brookfield Cannabis Zoning Bylaw. So, the maker of the motion has five minutes to speak to his motion. Test, test, test. Ready? 
Good evening. In 2019, the town meeting voted to adopt our marijuana bylaw by a vote of 73 to 4. The old medical marijuana overlay map was left in place, but the planning board has promised time and again to expand this tiny map, which includes only 2% of our population. If you are not one of the chosen few on the tiny red dots on Route 9, you don't even have the right to ask permission to try to participate. Tonight, the board will speak against this bylaw. They will say it is rushed, but it's been three and a half years and they have not fixed this. They have called on citizens to come forward, but in July when the chairperson asked me to write a memo to begin the process, I did the next day. Four months later, it has still not made the agenda. At the same meeting, she said it would take at least two years to fix, but five years is just too long to, <clears throat> to open up the opportunity we voted for. That is why we are here. The board, has a, the board has stated that she doesn't like the citizen petition, and that is understandable because what government body happily cedes its control to the citizens? But now the citizens have come forward to work on this problem. Maybe not in the way the planning board would like, but we are here to solve what even they agree is a problem. A bylaw which excludes 98% of us from any chance to participate while towns around us create jobs and increase revenue other than from residential property tax. We citizens of this rural town are perfectly poised to benefit from cannabis if we will only finally grant ourselves the opportunities we voted for in 2019. We citizens here tonight make up, make up, We choose to vote against this bylaw tonight and continue the virtual ban, denying ourselves the very rights we voted for in 2019. That is a fair outcome if we think so little of our own liberty. Or we can decide to act boldly and support this fair and more accessible bylaw. Opponents will point to changes in the bylaw presented tonight, and of course there are changes. The most notable is that we open up the growing of this plant to the landowners and farmers who grow plants, and that they can process the plants and make products from them appropriately on the land, just as a dairy produces cream and milk and then makes butter and cheese, or an orchard presses cider or a brewery bottles beer. All of these are things that are appropriate in the rural area. And the only difference here is the stigma that still attaches to marijuana. Aside from that prejudice, the situations are lar largely the same. This is an industry based on a plant, and we are a community of growers. We can grow it here and sell it statewide, and build businesses employing potentially hundreds of our citizens as they do in North Brookfield and Sturbridge and Southbridge. And we wrote this bylaw to keep most of the power with the planning board. Manufacturing outside the rural district, growing indoors, retail and medical all remain in the lengthy and arduous special permit process because this is a conservative bylaw. Some other towns have no special permit requirements at all. But we do say no to lengthy special permits for the farmer who wants to grow an acre or two in her field and the cultivator in a greenhouse because it is not fair to put them through a process meant for large projects. And this here tonight is not just about cannabis. It is absolutely about our freedoms. The question is, are we about freedom? Our liberty is the topic. Do we remove the absurd overlay map and open up the law to the rest of us? Whatever we do, it is an exercise in almost pure democracy. The people assembled here will decide if more of us should have the right to try. To simply be eligible as citizens of this town to approach the select board and ask permission to go to the state and ask permission. Because 98% of us here in this town don't have a house in the lucky zone, we do not have the right to even ask permission to try. To vote against these changes, you have to be comfortable with that restriction on your rights as a citizen and taxpayer. The opponents have the right to those opinions. I'm just hopeful that those opinions do not deprive the rest of us of the chance to ask permission to participate in this lawful opportunity if we want to. Not when 94% of this town meeting in 2019 already voted that we should have that liberty. Much more important than any particular product or plant is our freedom to make the choices we deem good for ourselves. That is what rights are for. That is what liberty means. And tonight, I urge my fellow citizens to vote for that freedom despite all resistance and add back the liberty which has been too long withheld. Thank you. No applauding, booing, cheering, or otherwise. All right? Constables will help you out of the room. You can see that. Am I clear?
Apologies. Everybody hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Good. All right. Uh, I do believe by law we are supposed to hear from uh, the planning board. Uh, and so a member of the planning board, I believe, is coming forward to, to uh, speak to us. Everybody still hear me okay back there? Yes. For my bellwether. Actually, the ladies in the back there are my bellwether. So I, you give me a thumbs up if, uh, or a thumbs down. If, Noise, but okay. Give me that one back. Give that. All right, folks. We had we were supposed to have the microphone set up here for us when we got here, and they weren't at. So my deepest apologies. This will never happen again because I will intervene. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I'm Sharon Mahoney, Chair of the Planning Board, have been for 15 years. Um, Mr. Frum came to us last June, actually prior to last June, and he emailed me and asked if he could grow, process, and sell on his property. And I told him that the bylaws would not, as, as they were written, were not allowed to. So he then um, went to the town administrator and worked with her, and she instructed him on how to do a citizen's initiative. Um, at the time, if I can backpedal a bit, at the time we um, instituted the original bylaw, there were some growers who were upset that the marijuana overlay district did, would not allow them to grow. And I spoke with them. One of them may even be here and said, if you want to come and work with the planning board, we'll work on an amendment together that we can jointly present to the town that would meet your expectations and your wishes and that would still protect the town. Because the job of the planning board is to balance the public good with private interests. That's our job. So uh, one of the girls came to one of our meetings. I offered to give him the state um, rules about what was involved in putting a cannabis business together. And I also approached the Agricultural Commission and asked them if they'd be interested in modifying our brand new bylaw. And I was told by the Secretary of the Agricultural Commission that no, none of the members were interested. Uh, Mr. Fromm later came to us and he uh, he put forth a citizen's initiative instead of working with the planning board, which is his right, but it was defeated, and it was defeated soundly. I then up, went up to him and his attorney, I believe, after that meeting and offered to work with him. And the memo that he talks about sent in July, I sent along to the planning board, and it was discussed. So that is, uh, that is not correct. We have been discussing changing the bylaw all along because the overlay district now needs to be either eliminated or revised because we now have a school smack in the middle of it. So that process was ongoing. As for the amendment that has been presented tonight, we have not seen it. Mr. Fromm and his lawyer attended the public hearing on the original warrant article. And he wanted, to, he wanted, through his lawyer, to for us to discuss the new amendment, when in fact that was not the legal point of the meeting. And we were reluctant to have a, a 12, 11th hour change that we would work on that night. So instead, we prepared a report for the warrant article. And some of you have it. I apologize that there's not enough copies. But what it does is it addresses the original warrant article most of which appears to be on this amendment, with the exception of the greenhouse uh, provision. And it lays out what we feel the changes would do to the life and the appearance of the town. The bottom line is we oppose the original warrant article. 
We were not allowed to take a vote on the amendment. We we're going to do that tonight, as is our right, but we were not allowed, to, we did not review it as a board. It's the first time we've seen it. So we're going to vote individually on it as citizens. But as far as the original warrant article goes, which I feel, after the time I've had to look at it, a few minutes, seems to be substantially like the warrant article that was printed and distributed for the meeting. The bottom line is, we feel that the changes to Brookfield zoning bylaw proposed are too far reaching in their removal or reduction of the protections and safeguards found in the current bylaw for the citizen of the town. The board also finds that the proposed text is unclear or inconsistent in places, making it less reliable as a guide to what it allows or doesn't allow. And for this reason, the planning board does not recommend approval of this article by town meeting. I want to stress, the board is not against marijuana businesses. We want to make sure the town's interests, the citizens' interests, the abutters' interests, most importantly, are protected, especially with regard to the rural residential area. People might be worried that a manufacturing facility, which is not allowed in a rural residential area at all under the current bylaw for any purpose, might spring up next to their house lot. You got 10 seconds. Um, I'm good, just going to wrap up, and um, we will we will go along with the will of the town. But we are going to keep working on a bylaw that the planning board will support, and we welcome Mr. Fromm's involvement again if he is willing to work with us. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Is there uh, okay? So now we're into two-minute speeches. Uh, is there someone that is in support uh, of the amendment? In support. I just have some information based on what has come out yeah. so uh, 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 Are you going to speak in support or, or you have a question? Is that what it is? I'm going to speak as the town assessor. Um, I just want to clarify the number of parcels that are affected by this. Okay. There are about 1,600 in parcel, top parcels. Can in everybody town. hear him okay? There are about 1,600 parcels in town. Between 130 and 135 of those parcels are privately held 10 plus acre parcels. Okay, thank you. All right, anybody that wants to speak in support of the motion to amend the bylaws, come on up to the microphone. If you want to speak and line up and things like that, feel free. Good evening, this is uh, Charles Gallant, 17 Main Street. Um, Support really is kind of an obvious thing. For that vote, it was overwhelming. I was there for that. So it's one of those things where it's like, why do I need you the permission to grow on my property if I need to? So that's kind of where it's frustrating. And I also found that the comments from the planning board, oh, let's work together. No, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm careful. Right careful. You need to be very careful about your comments about... I'm not attacking nobody. I found the comment to be a bit aggressive, that they're heavy-handed. Okay, before. and I want you to understand that I'm town moderator. And if you start defaming yes, and... I understand. Yes, sir. I understand. I'm not attacking nobody. I, pre I apologize. But it needs to pass. This is this amendment. It's going to be good for the community. It's good for people. And it potentially brings more jobs here than, you know, just driving through Walmart, big corporation. We d none of us want that. We want local businesses thriving. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anybody want to speak in opposition? In opposition to the motion? Mr. Moderator, yeah. I, I think that uh, I'm, I'm not opposed to uh, um, amending the uh, marijuana bylaw, the overlay. However, I think that you need cooperation between the petitioner and the planning board to meld their uh, thoughts and get them right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hello. Hello. Maureen Leepak, 121 Race Corner. You, you're right up to that microphone. 121 Race Corner. Um, I just wanted to comment mostly. Um, the petitioner, you know, goes on about liberty and freedom, and this is not a, simply an expansion of the overlay district. It attempts to circumvent the special permit process, which is not intended to give government more power, but residents and outlets have a say in what happens to the development of their town. So as written, this amendment just takes away your voice. And it too is something only a few can benefit from, as we just heard. 
and it creates an unfair balance by giving a select industry special privilege that other businesses don't have. The brewery had to go through this permitting process and I think a special permit should be required for uh, commercial enterprise. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody want to speak in support of the motion? Anybody want to speak in opposition to the motion? Yeah, I, I, I kind of assumed that, and so we're good, man. My name is Christopher Kelleher. I live at 36 Lake Road in Brookfield. And I'm definitely in support of this. And the reason is, is because we already voted on this. You know, it, overwhelmingly, almost 94%, I think. So, Christopher, could you do me a favor? Just, I know you can hear me. All right, there you go. Hear me now. Not too close, not too close. There, how's that? That's perfect. All right. So, I'm obviously in support of this because we already voted for this. And when we voted for it, it was mentioned that the overlay map was going to be a placeholder, that it was going to be changed. And it never got changed. And I know it's not the intention, but it still has the end effect that it's a and blame term, it's a bait and switch. And I'm not saying it was on purpose, but it has that's the end effect of it. You know, and it's it's frustrating because you tr you tried to work with the board and the, 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 the planning board, I was at that special it, meeting last night. So I, I could was, speak specifically to the amendment and not talk about any complaints about the planning board. Because I'm, not making any, I'm not making any complaints. Okay. I'm not making any complaints. So just let me finish my, my thought. I appreciate it. Okay. So what I was saying was, is I was at the special hearing last night. Okay. And the planning board said that the, 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 the amendment is a great foundation. It's a good foundation. Because I asked them point blank, is there anything in, the, in this amended, the, was there anything in the, the, the petition, citizen's petition that was good, that was positive? And they said it was a great foundation. Great. We have a great foundation. That's what we do to build houses. Let's build off that great foundation and move forward. Okay, we have a great foundation, but we can't move forward. This map that gives only the selected few the opportunity to even ask permission, I don't know in any other, any other process you can do that. To, to, to get a, a pool, to get anything. You can only live in this zone to even ask permission, to ask. And to sit there and say that, oh, once this goes past, if this gets past it, everybody's going to be growing it, my neighbor's going to be growing it, he's going to be growing it. You still have to go through the process, which includes the state. Okay? And that's not easy. We just want to get to the point where we can even ask permission. May I please ask permission? That's what we're asking for. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Would somebody like to speak in uh, opposition? Thank you, Ms. Moderator. Um, through you, um, I, I have a, a question for the planning board. And uh, I was at the public, I'm sorry, am I not, can you hear me now? They want, they want you to identify. Oh, I apologize, Tom Regan, uh, Six Mockingbird Lane. And I was at the meeting last night, so I would ask the planning board, um, the word foundation was used last night, and I would say that would you consider it a foundation, a solid document from which we can start unmodified? Or would you more consider it a starting point from which more discussion and more changes would go there? Um, because my thought is that the, the discussion that I heard last night was that the planning board did not think the document was good for the town, but might be a good starting point to come up with something that's good for the town. So I would like your characterization of what the other gentleman just cited from our discussion last night. I'm not going to speak to what the other gentleman said, but I am going to answer your question, and the answer is yes. We are trying to come up with a bylaw that has the maximum amount of input, and I'm not just talking signatures on a petition, I'm talking about active participation by as many people as possible, including other town officials for whose, whose advice we would seek. Um, as far as the document being a starting point, yes, uh, Mr. Fromm is entitled, as is any citizen, to put forth ideas about what he feels would be fair and beneficial to the town. And that is what I meant by a foundation. I'm not talking about um, a citizen's petition that would pass and then modify it. I'm talking about building from a set of ideas that he had and a set of wishes. You've got 10 seconds. And then balance it with uh, opinions from the rest of the town. Thank you. Uh, someone in support. 
Mr. Moderator, Ryan Servant, 125 Lake Road. Uh, I just want to make a point that the planning board, as mentioned, had three years to do something about that overlay map and hasn't done that yet. And so the fact that this would only affect about 130 parcels, I think the 135, thank you, parcels. Is that correct, 135? In that ballpark. That ballpark. Um, the fact that it's 10 acres and 200 feet means it's not going to be in the rural district. There's only certain numbers of uh, lots that can actually be affected by this. And I just want to make sure that it's not going to be cropping up at every single one of your neighbor's houses. How many of you guys have 10 acres and 200 feet uh, to be able to grow? Thank you. Anyone want to speak in opposition? Hang on one second. Anybody want to speak in support? Okay, you can speak a second time. This is your last time. Thank you. I have, I have several additional questions um, uh, to the planning board. Um, first of all, does the 10 acre requirement apply to manufacturing facilities or does that only apply to cultivation operations? Um, second of all, um, would you, um, between the time that the town approved the bylaw, including the town approving the overlay map back in July, excuse me, June of 19, and the month after, so we'll say July of 19, through my understanding of when Mr. Fromm approached the board in February of 22. So in that intervening time, did the board receive any indication of interest from town residents to make changes to the bylaw? I'll answer the second part of the question, and the answer to that is no, even though, as I said, I conducted outreach to par people and committees that I thought would be most interested in this. And again, either I got no response, except for two people, um, one of whom was Mr. Lamro, another was my neighbor, Wally Connor. I did not hear from them again after that and the other is the members of the Agricultural Commission. The board doesn't just spend time on this, we spend time on other permits as well, we have other business to conduct, and we've had some very large and contentious projects that we've spent months on. So our time is limited, we have one day a month. If we need extra meetings, we hold them. In fact, for the original bylaw, we had 18 meetings by the planning board. It was a deliberative process, deliberately conservative, and at the time I said it would be conservative so that we could build on it if we get feedback. Mr. Fromm did not approach us until 2022. It is not the planning board's fault that no one came Let's forward. Let's be careful. Thank you. It is not the planning board's you fault 10 seconds. that nobody came forward, and it is not the planning board's fault to drum up support for something when obviously after conducting outreach, nobody comes forward. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and somebody wished to speak in opposition. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I, it's too bad. Time's up. Um, uh, opposition, support, go ahead. I did just want to mention that we did uh, approach uh, the planning board at one okay, point. Okay, so I, I, I want to I want to stop this back and forth between the planning board and the proponents of this. I, I was okay. just correcting that. No, I, I just, I, I want to stop the back and forth between the planning board and the proponents of this motion, okay? Uh, you know, what's passed is passed. We're here to make a decision on this bylaw, not, not to get into a fight about who did what, when, where, and why, okay? So please direct your comments specifically to the, the motion that's on the floor, which is to amend the zoning bylaws, or the, the Brookfield Cannabis Zoning Bylaw, as it's been presented. Thanks. Okay. I was just making... All right. Um, is there anybody who want to speak in opposition? How about support? Hearing none. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. Mine, mine is a question. Okay. The uh, Warren article is on a sheet of paper, three sheets, and it was amended tonight. So my question is, is the scope of that amendment still within what was on the Warren article? Yes. Okay. And how, 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 uh, okay. So how, what did I, 
the second question is then, can someone explain to me the differences between what was in the Warren article and what was tonight? I'm going to allow uh, this gentleman over here to... Uh, Have we voted to uh, accept the new amended... Chris Gorman? That is, that is the motion that's actually been made. To change it? To change it? Because you said... Okay. Let me explain this please. carefully so that you understand what we're doing here and so that everybody understands what we're doing. Yes, I understand that there was a document that was distributed relative to tonight's meeting, okay, that was on the warrant, the citizen's petition specifically, okay. After the hearing last night, uh, they've made some, some modifying changes, okay, uh, clarifying changes as town council has explained to me. Uh, the, 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 the extent of the changes are not significant enough to put them outside uh, of the, uh, the, the warrant article as it was presented to the town. Okay? So what I'd like to do is I'd like to allow uh, this gentleman over here uh, who, um, I, are you a, you're a citizen, of, voting citizen of the town, are you? All right. Uh, can I get a motion to allow him to speak to the uh, to town meeting? Uh, there's a motion. Is there a second to allow him to speak? All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Uh, you are allowed to speak. Uh, and so uh, let me just explain what you're going to do. Uh, he's he's uh, going to explain uh, some specific changes that were made and so that everybody can understand what was done. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. My name is Blake Mensing. I'm a cannabis attorney and former municipal attorney. So the handout that you have before you tonight um, tweaked a few things in response to the planning board hearing uh, of last night. We added a new definition of greenhouse because the planning board pointed out that that wasn't defined, so we narrowed it down. Um, we cleaned up a little bit of a discrepancy relating to the 10 acres. Um, we added a new entry into the use table to indicate, uh, this was also a suggestion of the planning board last night, that a special permit still be required for uh, a greenhouse in the floodplain district. That um, table is on like the last page. Correct. Uh, and if you look at the, the you know, the, the far right column, uh, that's the permit granting authority. Uh, and that top cell there, it says PB for greenhouse, greenhouses in the FP. All right. Just that they added that. Okay, I just want to be clear. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, the other change was just to ensure that each section of the bylaw we're proposing to amend uh, went chronologically instead of jumping around, which I agree was, was confusing, and I apologize for not catching that before we submitted it. Um, the other section uh, that we struck, there was a limitation in the current zoning bylaw on sales floor area for retail stores at 2,500 square feet. Uh, we just struck that as a proposal. Uh, and then the other item we changed was um, something that was a, an attempt to change a general bylaw, which because it has a different quantum of vote uh, and may not have had legal force and effect uh, with respect to the Board of Selectmen's ability to delegate authority to someone else to negotiate a host community agreement, we struck that. Um, I know that's inside baseball talk, but there, there are really only three, four major changes. Um, the substance is the same, as the moderator said. It does fall within the purview of the warrant article. Um, and, you know, I did just read the report from the planning board, and many of the items that they identified were tweaked and, and I believe addressed with this uh, proposed handout here. Okay. Um, so, again, they were more clarifying uh, changes uh, fairly much in response to uh, the hearing uh, at the planning board whenever that was held. I understand it was last night. I was not there. Uh, okay. Um, is, that, is, that, is that pretty clear, uh, Council? Yes, there were also some... Yes, there were also some proposed changes that, that had originally been put forward in the citizen petition um, that the petitioner is no longer requested be changed. So they're um, actually leaving more portions of the bylaw uh, as it originally was written. Okay. So, uh, again, uh, I have made the determination uh, upon advice from council that uh, the document that you are looking at, the one that you received this evening, is within the scope and it is uh, reasonable for us to consider uh, this evening. So, uh, is there any further discussion on the motion? Uh, yeah. 
And hang on one moment. Jeff Clark, um, 101 Brunel Avenue. Just just a point so I'm, I'm not confused here, where it says striking section 8G 11A, uh, which currently states a special permit granted under the section is non-transferable. Any change in the majority of controlling persons as defined in, there's a, a title there, shall constitute a transfer and require a new special permit. Um, could I ask why, could I ask why this is uh, important to be deleted for the um, the citizen petition petitioners. Thank you for the question. Uh, so state law already requires a change of control application process before the Cannabis Control Commission for any change in ownership uh, at 10 percent equity or more of a licensed entity. Um, the way this was written, it's trying to borrow the standard and definition from 935 CMR, basically the CCC regulations, but it ignores that quantum of equity. So this says if you go from 1 percent to 2 percent, you have to come and talk to someone about it when the state doesn't require that. So it's just to line it up with what state law requires. Um, and then I just would make a note, and I, I haven't looked at a host community agreement in town. My guess is KP law would include a clause that says, if your ownership changes, you have to come back to the Board of Selectmen to ha introduce the proposed new owner. Absolutely. You're up, last time. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Two minutes. <clears throat> I got a couple questions here on, on clarification of how you're going to, are we going to vote each one of these uh, zoning bylaw changes or are you going to vote it as one block? One block. Yeah? Yes. Can I get, can I get a legal opinion? I'm not, I just. <clears throat> Mr. Moderator, for you, there's a motion on the floor to uh, amend this zoning bylaw. Is that correct? I, hang on. I, speak to me. There's nothing wrong with that motion, right? There's nothing wrong with the motion, Council okay. says. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, uh, move the question, please. Uh, there is a motion to move the question, that is, there is a motion to close debate. Uh, and this is a, it takes a two-thirds vote to do this, so is there a second to the motion? Second. Ah, there's a second. Ah, I forgot, almost forgot to do that. Um, so this takes a two-thirds vote. Uh, so uh, all those in favor of closing debate. Now, I want to be clear. All we're doing here is closing debate. This is not, and then we're going to, if this is successful, we're going to vote on the underlying uh, motion, which is to amend the zoning bylaws, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So all we're doing is taking a vote on whether we want to close debate on this. All those in favor of closing debate, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. The ayes have it. Debate is now closed. The motion is now, on, uh, or the main motion is now before us for a vote, uh, and that is to amend the bylaws, the Brookfield Cannabis Zoning Bylaw, as it has been presented here uh, this evening. Uh, this is going to require a two-thirds vote, uh, and so, um, and and so we're going to actually just go ahead and count this thing. Uh, only if you're going to raise a point of order, because debate is closed. I'd like to make a motion to vote by secret ballot. There is a motion uh, to vote uh, by secret ballot. Is there a second on the motion? Second. There is a second on the motion. Okay. So everybody understand what's going on here. Uh, we want a secret ballot. Uh, town clerk should have... Uh, appropriate supplies uh, for us to take a ballot questions. I just need to make sure we got the supplies uh, to make sure that we can do this, right? And so, and so a yes vote on this motion means that we will take a, uh, a, a secret ballot vote, okay? Uh, and a no says, no, we're just going to do this by counting. Okay, everybody clear? All right. So all those in favor of, uh, of a secret ballot say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The no's have it. We are not going to have a uh, secret ballot. Okay, so now we are back to the main question, okay, which is, again, uh, to amend the town Brookfield Cannabis Zoning Bylaw, 
and we are going to count. So all those in favor, in favor of amending the Brookfield Cannabis Zoning Bylaw, please stand to be counted and remain standing until the counters tell you you can sit, I guess. I don't know. We've got one counter going up here and another one is over there, just so everybody knows. All right, you all may be seated. Uh, all those who are opposed, uh, to amending the Brookfield Zoning Bylaws, uh, please rise and be counted. You're going to explain that tonight, okay? You're going to explain. Oh, it's over here. There it is. It's a very important point that you need to teach. Uh, is that your son down there? There we go. Uh, the no's are 51 and the yeas are 34. The motion is defeated. Um, so all those in favor of adjourning, or is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All those in favor say, is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone.